We're standing in the, in the area that was once occupied by the legendary coconut grove known as Helumoa. And Helumoa today is the home to Royal Hawaiian Center, as well as the Sheraton Waikiki, a Royal Hawaiian Hotel, and other adjacent properties. Uh, the grove is credited to Kakuhi Heva, who was a 16th century ruler of the island of Oahu. And Kakuhi Heva had an encounter with a, with a mythical rooster named Ka'au Helemoa, who came to Waikiki and uh, this encounter inspired Kakuhi Heva, the king, to plant a coconut grove in his honor, naming the area Helu Moa, which in Hawaiian means chicken scratch, uh, referring to Ka'au Hele Moa scratching in the sand here at Waikiki. For generations since then, Hawaiian ali'i or nobility has, uh, have called uh, Helu Moa home, including Kamehameha the Great after his conquest of Oahu in 1795. Most recently, in the 1880s, Princess Bernice Pawahi Kamehameha's great-granddaughter had a home here at Helumoa, and uh, this is where she spent the last years of her life. Because I miss you, my Waikiki is one of the most romantic places in the world. Why go anywhere else when paradise is right here in your backyard? I love everything about Waikiki. There was a time when there were just two hotels here in Waikiki and people were discovering Hawaii and the music and the sounds of the ocean as you're listening to music in the Monarch Room and you can see Diamond Head and you can hear the ocean. I think it just adds to the whole feeling of how beautiful and romantic this place is. The people that came to Hawaii in that time um, were fairly affluent. They had to take a, a ship to come. That's like four and a half to seven days aboard a ship. Then they'd stay here for a period of time, rather extended. You know, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel from its very beginning through World War II was recognized as being uh, special and by virtue of the title Royal Hawaiian Hotel. It had certain kinds of expectations of even the guests. For example, uh, if you came to the Royal, be you from locally or be a hotel guest, if you went to the Monarch Room, you had to wear a coat and tie. Ladies came in with their nice evening gowns and, and with their furs, and it was just wonderful. In 1963, when I first started at this beautiful Royal Hawaiian Hotel, I started here in this monarch room as a busboy. I had the opportunity and the privilege of working with a lot of the seasoned wait staff that were here from when the hotel was first opened. Ms. Haunani Kahalawai, who performed on this beautiful, uh, in this monarch room, she performed a beautiful show here for our guest that was dining. We had an orchestra, the Phil Ingalls Orchestra, that performed here for dancing. It was dancing before the show, and when Haunani was done with her show, they continued the dancing uh, in the monarch room. Ms. Amaviri, when she graced this stage, the monarch room stage, she had a golden voice that people remembered her from in the past and she even sang in, in the, with the Philharmonic Orchestra in New York and everyone just loved her, her style of singing. It seemed that there wasn't the promotion of Hawaiian entertainment, it was just there. And so people who were old time visitors and they were back, they went looking and they'd find you. And the beach boys surfing with the tide to the shores with girls side by side.
know, it's really an honor to be able to play here in the Monarch Room. I remember as a child visiting from Hilo and coming to this hotel, and it was like a palace, you know? I think it still is. It's, it's magical. And the history here, the musicians who've played here, the people who visited here, you know, they still walk here. They, you can feel their, their souls in this place. And so it's such an honor to be able to play here. It's like the Carnegie Hall of Hawaii. What is it about Hawaii that people love so much? And what is it about Waikiki specifically that draws them here? And um, I wrote a song called Strolling on the Beach at Waikiki, which is a, a feature of this new romantic Waikiki show. And it just talks about how good it feels to be in this place, take your shoes off, smell the ocean air, walk the beach, stroll the shops and the streets, and get a sense of what Hawaii is today and what Hawaii was 50 years ago. I remember in the 80s, the showroom here was the place to go. The Brothers Casimero opened at the Monarch Room of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel on September 6, 1982. It was Roland's birthday. My birthday, yeah. It felt great, first of all, especially to be playing at the Grand, the grand Lady. At the Royal Hawaiian, you know, uh, I remember walking the beaches and watching the shows. And uh, when we played with my mom, uh, just to like you know play a, a small party here was, was like, wow, great. But to be the headliners of uh, the Monarch Room, it was the best. Brothers Cousin Merrill was the longest running show we had here in the Monarch Room. I believe it's because their, their style of entertaining, their, the visitors really enjoyed the, the old nostalgia of, of Hawaii. come to Waikiki and almost on every corner you would hear Hawaiian music. Mm -hmm. So you could pretty much go from one end of Waikiki to the other and just kind of stop in and listen to all the different musicians performing. Everyone knew that Waikiki was someplace special. Playing here at the Monarch Room, uh, it just wasn't, uh, and every night just playing a couple of songs, uh, it became a, a show thing that for me, I think it taught Robert a lot about uh, making shows, you know? Yeah, it was a, a great, being at the Royal Hawaiian was a great opportunity to learn your craft, to hone it, uh, to realize that after performing in this kind of a situation, we could perform almost anywhere. anywhere. You know, my biggest influences in my life um, musically were my parents. Of course, we all come from Kamehameha schools and we were participating in the Country Glee Club. So there is where our formal education came from. And a lot of people say that, you know, we have unique harmonies and it really does stem from our choral teachings at Kamehameha. Today, Royal Hawaiian Center, Sheraton Waikiki and Royal Hawaiian Hotel are, are generating revenue for, for education for Hawaiian children at Kamehameha schools. So these, these properties as commercial real estate assets also provide for the, the lasting legacy of Princess Bernice Pawahi. 46 years is a long tenure to work in one, you know, one place. And I treasured every moment of it because the people I met was always interesting, the performers that were performing here, even if they were like the brothers Casimir, they've been here 11 years, it's always exciting. They would change the show, they would make it different, they would make it exciting so that people would come back to the Monarch Room. And that's what we want to create. We want, we want people to start coming back to the Royal Hawaiian. We want our Kama'ainas and our visitors to experience the Royal Hawaiian, the Monarch Room, the shows, the experience, the memories that they can create for themselves. And this is it. 
There's no other showroom in Waikiki. There's no other room at all. The Monarch Room is the premier room of Waikiki. Of all the places you can go, only one will soothe your soul. Strolling on the beach at Waikiki. Waikiki. Ooh. Strolling on the beach at Waikiki.